My favorite motivational speaker is Eric Thomas, right? Okay. If you know anything about E.T., the hip-hop preacher, he's like he's like a, a football coach type right. of joint, right? Right, right. And Definitely he got a advice. powerful story. And I'm, I, I'm still insecure about me as a motivational speaker, and I'm watching one of the greatest speakers ever, and he's like, yo- I slept in abandoned buildings. I ate right. out of trash, trash cans. cans. Right, 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 right. You need to get up and do something. I'm like, oh, okay. But I'm like, but that's not my story. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I can't be a speaker. Who want to listen to me? I never slept in abandoned buildings. I never ate out of trash cans. I never, who want to hear from me? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm talking myself out of my purpose, bro. This is crazy. Because I'm comparing myself to the greatest, like, which is fine. For I'm, sure. I'm comparing myself to the greatest. I'm like, my, that's not my story. And because that wasn't my story, I felt like I couldn't do what he's doing. So Charlemagne the God said, most people don't recognize an opportunity if there's no paycheck attached to it. Real line. Hard bar. So I said yes to that opportunity. He got me introduced to the principal, Jamal Bowman. Salute to you. Jamal Bowman sponsored my vendor's license, meaning he put his name on the line for me. He vouched for me, Mm. right? Got me my vendor's license. Yo, bro, the first gig that I did after I got my vendor's license for a 45-minute speech, they paid me $2,500. This was the same exact speech you was doing for free. free. Listen, I'm coming. I'm coming right now. Come on in, y'all. Truly, truly honored and blessed to spend and invest time with these guests. But most importantly, spend time and invest time with you too. If you don't know who I am, I'm Rob De La Rosa, the bald-headed Dominican from the Bronx. And all you gotta do to help me, help you, is like, comment, subscribe. At all. Ladies and gentlemen, here here's a this one is special. I know I've, I've I've said that before, but it's at a different magnitude because I met this man for the first time mm-hmm. a couple a month. What is that? A couple months ago? Yeah, a couple months. Yeah, a couple yeah, months yeah. ago. If y'all remember my clip, I was in Vest Fest. Someone stopped me real quick, asked me, "Yo, you from New York?" I had my man Milk. Shout out to Milk. I had Milk shirt on. He interviewed me on the spot, mm-hmm. and here we are today. Full circle moment number one. Full, full <laughs> circle moment number one. We Let got me, so many. Go oh, ahead, ladies man. and gentlemen, it's in the living room podcast where we learn, laugh, and heal. And today mm. we got an author. We have a uh, motivational speaker, mm-hmm. and we also have a man who goes into schools and teach kids about podcasting and how to mm-hmm. podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The young executive King Cross Let's in the go. building. Clap it up for my guy on top. <laughs> Yo, bro, bro. I'm excited to be here, man. Thank you for coming, bro. No, thanks for, for having me, King. Came, for came me. from Connecticut. And this is a man, a man true to his word. You know, we chopped it up recently, came all the way, all the way from Connecticut, mm-hmm. got him in the boogie down. That's because I don't got a barber in oh, the Bronx. I was like, yo, I got a podcast. I'm going to run back home yeah, real quick yeah, and come yeah. right back. So, yeah, for I was sure. already in the Bronx back in the Run the CT and run back. So, the commute's been crazy for me. I feel you, bro. Look, bro, I'm, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I'm honored to be in this space, bro, because before we got on camera, we just talking about full circle moments. Connecting so many dots. This is insane. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just shot, let me just get there, and, and we're going to get to his story and all that, but I want you to know the feel, I want you to feel what we're feeling mm-hmm, mm-hmm. through the audio and through the camera. As a matter of fact, my boy Justin, who was at InvestFest, he had a booth. We just wrapped up with him, but, but my boy Tristan- is the person who introduced me to Milk oh, was just here. Wow. And we actually spoke about you when I met Milk. Wow. Which is crazy. Wait, what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, I'm going to spit this back. So, all right. So, look, guys. I've, I've been fortunate to just know people, great relationships, right? Right. 
Milk is the man. That, if you look at the episode, go back. He has his own clothing line. Mm-hmm. He goes in schools, help kids with their uniform. Incredible story. Mm-hmm. But I meet him through my man, Tristan. He said, yo, I got a guy I think will be a great guy for your podcast. And if it comes for someone like Trish, I'm taking his word for it. It's locked in, yep. My man Chase is solid, all right? So I'm like, cool, let me meet the man. The day I go to meet him, I tell him that one of my initiatives, the reason why I'm doing this podcast, and this is why it's crazy to have you here, is because I want to get into schools and teach kids that they can do what they want to do. Not even knowing that I could teach kids mm-hmm. about podcasting. Mm-hmm. It's... I want to I want to be able to take every guest that I have on here and have that a curriculum where oh you want to know about trucking I got a female that can teach you about Facts. that you want to know about social media it's part of the curriculum right. if that's what it stayed out right. for and I'm speaking in milk like, yo bro this is what I want to do I'm, as a matter of fact I'm gonna go speak to a school I spoke to a school in the Bronx it was a great great turnout and he's like yo bro I could get you in the school and we spoke about you I got one of my men I didn't know it was you milk started talking about you yeah one of my boys and I was like. Oh, so yeah. so Trish yeah. confirmed it with now. This is crazy. So full, yeah. Circle. So you can you can actually go into schools and teach kids to be the best version of themselves and get paid for it, right? It's 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 good when you do something out of, out of the goodness of your heart. But I sure. say it's nothing better than making a living while making a difference. Mm. So yeah. So <laughs> if you if you if you're if you're making an impact, mm. why not get paid for it? That's why I kind of I kind of hate when people be like, "Yo, why is pastor getting paid? Why is this person getting paid? You should do it out of goodness of the heart." But listen, you got people on stages mm-hmm. cursing, mm-hmm. teaching you how to be destructive in your life, mm-hmm. and you expect them to be millionaires, right? All mm-hmm. the artists we listen to Facts. with a crazy message, we expect them to be millionaires. Sure. But when somebody's talking about God, when somebody's talking about helping the kids, when somebody's helping uh, talking about anything for uh, uh, that 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 deals with making an impact, we expect them to be broke. But nah. You talking right now, bro. Why Why not have the person with the good message getting good paper along with it? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and can I get an amen to why that? Not? Hallelujah. All of the Come above, on, bro. Now. now that's real. That is, And it's crazy because you being a person that, I don't even know if people knew that, right? That this was even a door that was available. Right, but how did right. you get here, right? So, so give me the, we know what you're doing today. Right. How does this even happen for Jeez. you? There's so many components to it, but the the short of it is, um, well, one, I went to college, and I, to keep it a buck, which I went to college to study business, right? I thought I was going to learn how to run my own companies and do whatever I want to do, mm. but I went to school. They taught me how to work for somebody else the rest of my life. That's not necessarily what I wanted to do. I, I never... I never wanted to work harder for someone else than I did for myself. So I joined a network marketing company while I was in college, and that's what really taught me how to run a business. Mm. So back then, anyone who knew me back then <laughs> knew I joined a, a prepaid legal, now known as Legal Shield. Mm-hmm. I joined that company, and it taught me everything, bro. It taught me how to do a presentation, how to recruit people, how to be relentless, how to not take no for an answer. It even taught me personal development and the right books that millionaires read, the things I need to be doing to grow mentally, mm. physically, spiritually, emotionally. And it led to me being a better leader. Like all these things I learned through network marketing. And I started applying that to my life. Uh, joined a fraternity, Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, yo. Um, Shout and, out to the noobs. And from, from there, I applied everything I learned in business to my fraternity everything I learned in my fraternity to my business. Mm. And that's how I became the youngest executive director in the state of Maryland. And everyone was like, yo, oh, we need to get you on the phone with the young executive director. We need to get you on the phone with the young executive director. So the, the name caught on. I'm like, oh, the young executive. And because of my ties with my fraternity, spell it with a K, young executive. <laughs> I get you know it I mean? now. So um, that's how my brand name came about. Back then it was just a username for Twitter, but it ended up becoming my brand name. And I was working corporate America, just the tr- just started at Enterprise, grinding at Enterprise, went to Enterprise car sales, started working for a university. And during that time, I was still in prepaid legal or legal shield, and I was still doing personal development, but I started, I started sending out daily text messages to my, my friends, right? Because I knew I was going through a lot at the time and I needed a word of motivation. So whenever a quote hit me, I just text my friends. 
So they started, they started like expecting my messages. Mm. And that caught on. It started growing to the point where I started posting on social media. Now everyone on my text list and everyone on social media is expecting quotes from me. So I was working. This was the, the reason that I was at that job. The job paid me nothing. I, I would commute an hour. Um, I, I would commute, commute an hour there and back. <clears throat> I would work like 10 to 12 hours. They expected me to make 100 phone calls um, a day. Like documenting, like, you got to make Yeah, oh, absolutely. If I was under 100 calls, they're like, yo, Carl, why is your call volume so low? Right? So again, I'm working hard as hell for somebody else. And I was still doing personal development at the time. And I was sending out daily quotes and text messages. This, one of my coworkers gave me a gift for Secret Santa. It was a daily motivational quote book. She's like, Carl, you probably got a million of these because you're the quote king, but here you go. You know, I hope you enjoy it. And I'm looking at it like, yo, what is this? That's so crazy, bro. Every day was a quote, a message, and like a little affirmation. And I was like, yo, this is the dopest book anyone has ever given up. Yo, this is incredible. I use that as my blueprint book because I was like, yo, I want to create a book like this. This girl that I was dating at the time, she said, okay, you can write a book like that, but what's going to make it unique to you? And I was like, it's coming from me. Right. That's, but, but that's not good enough. It's coming right. from me. It's like, I'm him. Nah, right. nah, but right. but she, was, she was kind of like, okay. But in my mind, I knew that wasn't enough, right? Um, the shortest way I can tell this story is even as a leader, I was I was drinking heavily, right? And that's a whole nother story. But I realized now in my older, wiser self that I was drinking because I was sad. I was drinking because I was depressed. Mm. And I was trying to drown my pain away, right? <clears throat> I went to this big event. I embarrassed myself there as a leader. I embarrassed myself there because I was so drunk. I made a vow that I would not drink for a year. And my reward for not drinking for a year was God planting the idea for my book in my head. So my book is called 365 Hip Hop Daily Motivational Quotes. It came as a result of me fasting from drinking for a year, but it also came because I had a blueprint book in my hand. The quote, the quote book had like quotes from like Dr. King, JFK, you know, right, like right, 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 Socrates. Right. But I'm quoting Jay-Z, Beyonce, Drake, Future, uh, you know, Kendrick, Cole, like all these. That is fire, dog. So all, everyone who was influencing me, I quoted the positive things that they said, added my motivation to it in a daily affirmation. So once I dropped that book, <laughs> it became number one international best-selling book. You know all right, hold saying? on here. <laughs> hold on here now. Hold on. How, what did you use? Was this Amazon days? Did you find the agency? Do you have friends who are authors? Because right, you got the that's idea. A good, that's a good question. Because because I was so confused on how to do it, right? The idea came in my mind. I'm so jacked up. I'm like, yo, this book. I knew it. I was mm -hmm. like, yo, this book's going to be a bestseller. I didn't know how to, I didn't know what, <laughs> how? What? Where do I, where do you sell this? I only knew one person that ever wrote a book. He's one of my frat brothers. He wrote a poetry book. So I was trying to ask him details. Like, how do you do this? How do you do that? It's kind of like. When you're new at something, you could get it done, but it doesn't mean you're able to teach someone the same thing. So it was kind of, he gave me as much information as he could, and I used that to continue along. So I did the, I did the cover on my own. I did, um, not, not on my own, but I hired someone to do the cover for me. Um, I hired someone to do the editing for me. I wrote it all out. Like I, so I had the rough draft in my hand. I didn't know what to do from there. Mm. And then I'm I'm sitting in church and I'm listening to a sermon. This guy is preaching. I'm feeling everything he's saying. But then he, the guy says he owns a publishing company. And I'm like, right place, right time, right person. This is a sign from God. You know, so I approach him. I tell him about the book. We we, we pretty much sign paperwork and we we get it going. Um, I learned a lot from him. But it wasn't what I thought it would be. Mm. You know? I paid a lot uh, for him to help me globally distribute my book. Okay. Everything is already done. Yeah. So all I really needed him to do was format the book, meaning the interior design of the book, and blast it out everywhere. 
And he didn't do that. He formatted the book. I paid him a little bit. I paid him under 3000 so about $2,500. Mm-hmm. He formatted the book. And from there, I, t- I kept telling him, like, yo, I want to be a bestseller. I want to be a bestseller. Mm. He didn't know how to help me with that part of it. So I, 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 found, um, I found someone that helped me with that part of it. And there was like a little bit of friction between the, the new person that I hired just for marketing mm-hmm. and him, right? It was from friction there. Long story short, he's like, here, take the book. And he never actually globally distributed it. But it is what it is. I learned a lot from him. I learned mm-hmm. so much from him. And I realized that in that in that time frame, he had ownership of my book. Mm. And when the marketing company discovered that, they were trying to like let go of that. Yeah, and help that. me yeah, make yeah, be yeah. independent. I thought I was independent. Dependent. You had the idea. I don't need this help with this. But shit. I was a dependent, independent author because I trusted someone that actually knew that I didn't know. So he owned the ISBN, I mean that's like the book social security number. He owned that. I remember one day, like I had to call him for printing. If I needed to print my book, I had to call him. If I needed to put my book on a website, I had to call him. If I needed anything this done crazy. for my book, I had to call him. So I'm like, I don't feel like an independent author right now. Right. And um, one day I was trying to be slick, right? I ordered mad books from him. The books came. I saw the company name on the book on the box. I was like, I'm gonna call the company. Because I'm like, yo, I think the guy's charging me more than I need to be paying for these books. Mm-hmm. I was like, so I called the company up. I'm like, hey, my name is Carl. I want to order these books. they like, I'm sorry, we can't do that. I'm like, what, what do you mean? Like, this is the book title. Like, I want to order these books. There's like, this book is under such and such publishing. I'm like, but it's my book. There's like, okay, but it's under such and such publishing. I'm like... It's my face on the cover. Right, like, this, this is, is my, my book. Stuff. Like, right. Like, I want to bring my book. Right. They're like, we can't do that. You have to go through them. And I'm like, yo, I'm stuck. Mm. You know? So long story short, I got out of that contract, but I learned so much. And that's how I created my company, Write a Legacy, because I learned. Right, that's hard. Write a Legacy. Write a Legacy. Write a legacy. Cause you could write, that's fire. I learned what not to do in those situations. I learned how so many people take advantage of the fact that so many people don't know how to publish a book. I learned what not to do, and I also learned what to do. When I released a book, I released a book at 1 p.m. on a Tuesday. It was um, it was December 28th of 2015. I released a book at 1 o'clock. By 7 o'clock, it was a bestseller in the U.S. The next day, it was bestseller in three categories. The day after that, it hit Canada. London and Japan as number one as well. Hold on, Carl. Feel so me? this is hold on. This is Come crazy. On. So, so this is you, after you leave his publishing. Right, right, right. You right, on right. your own. Right. You figured it out. Right. Give me that time frame. Right. How long ago was it? Oh from? no, it was. It was. I don't remember when when we stopped rocking with each other. Uh-huh. But um, I remember. I remember. I I I released the ebook version right before the year was out. So December twenty eighth, right. But because there was so much confusion with the printing of the book, the print version didn't come out till like January or February. So I probably lost mad bread during that time frame because so many people wanted the physical copy and I had to go through him to get the physical copy. Uh-huh. So it was still a little friction there, but um, about a month and some change, month okay. and a half yeah, during that's that time fire. frame. It's not that long. Um, so, so the book starts doing numbers. It starts taking off and I'm starting to tour a little bit. Um, go to different places. I hire a marketing company to help me push the book. So I'm in Atlanta, I'm in Cali, I'm in Houston, I'm in Chicago, I'm in all these different places promoting my book. And just the numbers keep going up. But after a while, it starts to like dip a little bit. So I hire this company. I'm like, I want to, I want to, I want to be big. I want to get myself out there a little bit, you know, but I, I don't, I just want to sell books. I thought I was gonna have Drake level success. <laughs> I thought I was gonna double platinum off, out off here, like just off your the book sales. So I hired this company, and and mm. I was only with them for a few months. But the 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 head of the company said something to me that changed my life forever. She said, "Carl, your product is amazing, but I heard you speak. Your gift is in your speaking." Mm. Because all I wanted to do was sell books. And she was like, okay, Carl, you can go on, you can sell a, 
a few hundred, I mean, you could sell 20 books at an event, you make a few hundred dollars. But if you go to that same event and speak for 20 minutes, you make a few thousand dollars and you could probably <laughs> still sell 20 books, right? <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, you got a point there. Yeah. But I was so reluctant to be a speaker. I didn't want to speak. Why? There was so much pressure in that title. When you meet somebody, they're like, oh, I'm a motivational speaker. You're like, all right, well, motivate me. You feel me? Like in my that. mind, in my mind, it's like walking up to Damn, somebody and they're like, oh, I'm a comedian. You're like, all right, well, make me laugh. <laughs> right? It, it's, uh-huh. I thought there was going to be so much pressure in the title. I was running from it. So what I realized is I was doing, I, st- I started speaking a little bit, right? I feel like I was doing surface level motivation. You can do anything you put your mind to. <laughs> right. Dust yourself off. Try it again. Like right. it was so surface level with what I was saying. I didn't start to make an impact until I, I had a conversation with God. I was running from my past. I was running from the things I used to do. And I was running from my, my testimony, right? And I was in prayer. And this quote came to me directly from God. Don't be ashamed to share your story. It will inspire others. That's when I really started going in because I used to, I realized I used to be a follower growing up and then I became a leader. I was one handshake away from joining a gang, right? I turned it down and most people in that situation can't walk away from that. Mm. But I was blessed to be able to walk away from that mm-hmm. with no issues at all. You know, like I was, I was, I was a wannabe. I was trying to be a, a, a thug. I was trying to be hard. I was trying to do all these things when, when I was trying to fit in. But I realized I wasn't born to fit in. I was born to stand out. So it wasn't until I was vulnerable with my story, I was vulnerable with, with my past, that I gave other people permission to do the same. And when I gave other people permission to do the same, to be vulnerable, that allowed me to impact them. So once I embraced my role as a motivational speaker, that's when my life started to change. How long did it take from you to go, I don't want, the pressure in the title makes me stay away from it, so I'll do it here and there. Mm-hmm. Was it an event that made you go, no, nah, I'm a speaker? Like, did you, when did you like really put that hat on and say, no, nah, I'm a motivational speaker because the impact is here? That's a good question, man. Now that I think about it, I don't know when that moment was. I just started to walk in my purpose. Mm. Once I got that message from God, I just started to walk in that purpose. And it's still scary. You could you could say it all you want, but then I was like, yo, you can't be a scared motivational speaker. That sounds crazy. <laughs> that sounds crazy. So you got to do it. Uh, so yeah. I was just putting myself in position to learn. And learning could be scary because you're out of your comfort zone. So I was stepping to place, I was stepping in rooms and I wasn't even sure if my message was going to hit or not. And the crazy thing about being a speaker, it's like being on stage, like because of, because of my history in network marketing, I don't know if this if this is the same for you, but I could go into the room, start doing a presentation and my mind is on autopilot, right? I'm gone. Yeah, it's over. I'm reading body language in the 100%. room. I'm like, oh, he's signing up. She's definitely signing 100%. up. He, ain't, he don't care what I say. He ain't signing up at all. So I'm connecting. So I would go in rooms and I know I was bombing. Like kids wasn't paying attention to my message, none of that. But what I had to do was I paid attention to what they were paying attention to. Mm. There were moments in my presentation where they were. Bros, they were in awe. Mm. They were like, yo, that was you. I showed them an actual picture of my before and after. Mm. I showed them exactly who I was hanging out with. Mm. And they're like, yo, that's you. So now I realize, oh, let me put this slide in the beginning yeah, of my right. presentation. Let me get them right away. Now I got them locked in from the start. And now right they're, they're tied into my every word. So it, I, I started walking in my purpose. I was making a lot of mistakes. Mm. I remember, shout out to my man, Do It All from Newark, New Jersey. This dude built a stage in the middle of the projects. He was like, go ahead, motivate them. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro, I ain't going to hold you. <laughs> no, anything for the hood. Yeah. That was the toughest crowd I've ever, 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 ever experienced be, in bro. my life, bro. Damn, I was bro. the only speaker not from the New- Newark, New Jersey, not from the bricks, right? You, you put up a stage in the middle of the projects. I'm the only speaker not from that hood, and I was bombing, bro. I was, I was, I, to my standards, I was terrible, bro. What time is he giving you? <laughs> I, had, like, I had a like five, 10 minutes, five, bro. Five, 10 minutes. 
I was doing terrible, bro. But but I never let them see me sweat. In my mind, I was panicking, mm. but my delivery was still solid. Um, but I realized yeah, it's it's like it's like um, coming with the written when everybody wanted a freestyle. Mm. So so at that at that at that stage, I learned so much. Right, you learn more from your mistakes. Jim Rohn once said, "You learn more from losing than you do by winning." winning right? right. So I. I was bombing, but I paid attention to what they wasn't rocking with. The fact that I was doing like a keynote banquet style speech in the middle of the hood, <laughs> like, they wasn't rocking with that. <laughs> Who is this? Who's this? Pack them yo, up. Get, get, <laughs> yo, whose man is up. this? Pack them up. Fact. Like, yeah. you can't do a keynote banquet style speech in the middle of the hood. They're not mm-hmm. going to feel you. Okay. So- in that, even though I was spitting real stuff, mm-hmm. it wasn't authentic. Mm-hmm. So I'm learning this as I'm going, but as I'm going, I'm growing. So most people are too afraid of the growing pains to continue. They quit in the middle of the pain. But I was like, nah, I'm gonna push through because this is this is my purpose. This is what I'm destined to do. So I gotta get better at this. I got a message. I got an impact. I'm gonna I'm gonna reach somebody. So if I'm not good today, I'm gonna learn how to be better. So I just kept learning and learning and learning. And it, and it got to the point where I'm in schools every day. People are calling me. I'm doing big, a big shows, like 2,000 kids, 400, 500, whatever the case may be. My show, my youth empowerment show is growing. I started this show because I wasn't getting motivational gigs. So I created my own program, right? So I, I'm doing all these things, starting to make an impact. I'm booking show after show after show. Then COVID hit. Mm. Once COVID hit, well, so during that time frame, I wasn't getting paid at first. This is important. Um, I wasn't getting paid at first when I was doing the speaking school gigs, right? It okay, was, so you're just just for clarification, right. your speaking gigs is catered to schools. I was primarily. Catered, I was catering to the youth because again, it was imposter syndrome, right? It was like, yo, I, you, my favorite motivational speaker is Eric Thomas, right? Okay. If you know anything about ET, the hip hop preacher, he's like. He's like a, a football coach type right. of joint, right? Right, right. And Definitely he got a about. powerful story. And I'm I'm still insecure about me as a motivational speaker. And I'm watching one of the greatest speakers ever. And he's like, yo, I slept in abandoned buildings. I ate <laughs> right. out of trash, trash cans. cans. Right, 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 right. You need to get up and do something. I'm like, oh, okay. But I'm like, but that's not my story. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I can't be a speaker. Who want to listen to me? I never slept in abandoned buildings. I never ate out of trash cans. I never, who going to hear from me? Mm. So I'm like, I'm talking myself out of my purpose, bro. This is crazy. Because I'm comparing myself to the greatest, like, which is fine. I'm, sure. I'm comparing myself to the greatest. I'm like, my, that's not my story. And because that wasn't my story, I felt like I couldn't do what he's doing. Okay. So comparison is a thief of joy. I'm not a I'm not an in your face football coach. I'm a chill laid back dude. But people can relate to me as a chill laid back person, mm-hmm. right? So it's like you don't have to be anybody else. That's that, that's the message that I was I was giving myself. I had to learn that you don't have to be anybody else. Embrace your uniqueness. God made me the way that I am for a specific reason, a specific purpose. But we get so caught up trying to be somebody else. We flip through the gram trying to be relationship goals. We trying to do this, trying to do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's like no. Walk in your purpose. Walk in your uniqueness. Embrace that. So once I started embracing that, that's when things started to change for me. So I was in schools because I was doing things for free. For free. People started inviting me to career days, and I'm telling them, "Oh, this is who I am." Boom, 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 boom. But all the kids started to like gravitate to me, right? But also I was. I was like, maybe I can't speak to adults. Maybe I don't got a message for them. But I do got a message for the kids on how I went from a follower to a leader. I can talk about that. So I started talking about that, and I just started getting bigger and bigger. And But I was like, yo, how come I'm not getting paid? I'm like, yo, at this point, I'm like, yo, I'm nice. Right, right. I do this. This is me. It's me. Right. I know I'm going to walk in. I'm going to crush this. But why am, I, why, am I, why am I still broke? And... um. There was there was a, a gentleman that I connected with. He was 
he was like, yo, Carl, I want you to come speak to Career Day. I'm going to be honest, we don't have a budget for you. But what I will do is I'll connect you to the principal and I'll get you your vendor's license. I didn't know what that meant. But I was like, I don't got nothing to lose, right? And um, I could have easily turned that down. Mm. And that was the one thing that financially changed my life forever. I could have easily turned that down. So Charlemagne the God said, most people don't recognize an opportunity if there's no paycheck attached to it. Real line, hard bar. So I said yes to that opportunity. He got me introduced to the principal, Jamal Bowman. Salute to you. Jamal Bowman sponsored my vendor's license, meaning he put his name on the line for me. He vouched for me, mm. right? Got me my vendor's license. Yo, bro, the first gig that I did after I got my vendor's license for a 45-minute speech, they paid me $2,500. This was the same exact speech you was doing for free. free. Crazy. Now they paying me $2,500 to do the same speech. Um, uh, from there, I just kept Building. getting booked for gigs, mm -hmm. right? COVID hit, and then I had to just reshift everything. I, I started coaching people online. I started helping people um, write books and publish books. I've helped so many people with my Write a Legacy program. It started just as a pandemic pivot, but it really became a whole business. So to date, we have over 2,000. Oh, I'm sorry, 200. Oh, soon to be 2,000. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so, so to date, we have over 200 best-selling authors and counting. Um, and then I made, crazy, I made enough money with Write a Legacy to open up my studio in Connecticut. I was managing a producer at the time, so I opened up a recording studio, podcast studio, and photography studio, three in one. And when the school started to open back up, I was like, yo, why not combine my love for the kids with my studio and teach them how to do podcasting? So, bro, I make more money teaching kids podcasting than I was doing as a full-time motivational speaker. And it's less kids, less time frame, <laughs> but way more money. Because I recognize, like, there's so it's many, crazy. It's so many, it's so many things to it. But there's some key words that I'll give y'all um, when it comes to schools, right? Okay, I'm listening. I so the the, the biggest word was three letters: S E L. And, yeah, social sure. emotional learning. Mm -hmm. When you have a program that caters to social emotional learning, they'll pay you for it, right? But since the pandemic, they started paying huge amount of money for STEM and STEAM programs. Mm. So science, technology, engineering, arts, math, anything that has uh, along the lines of that, they pay huge bread for it. So now I'm combining social emotional learning with, with arts tech. and technology. So now they're like, we got to get you in. And everyone's realizing how big podcasts are blowing up. So I started implementing a program. Bro, I just created a program off the whim, bro. Off the whim. I've, I've recorded some podcast episodes, but I've never actually dropped any podcast episodes. You feel me? You make more money by teaching the thing than you do by doing the thing. Bro, which is crazy, bro. This is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> you know, let me tell you what that's doing to me, bro. This is what, this is what it's doing to me because everything is context, right? Everything is context and everything is relative because I just had a conversation. The master investor was sitting exactly wow, okay. in that chair, mm -hmm. right? And by definition, someone can say that you're not qualified. Right, right, right. Right? right? Uh -huh. You're not qualified. Mm -hmm. You're somewhat of a fraud because you don't have one mm -hmm. yourself. So why are you teaching it? But in this scenario, is the prime example where knowing the knowledge mm -hmm. and teaching someone how to do it can pay you more than actually doing so, it. And, here, and here's the deal. I've Crazy. sold a lot of books. And that gives you credibility to get in front of. I sold a lot of books, but I made more by teaching how to write books than mm. actually writing my book, right? So I own the studio. I have a bunch of people rent out podcast space. I did a few episodes of my own podcast, never put anything out, but I learned the information. I know what tools to use. I'm in position to teach, right? And because I'm already in the schools, I can offer this as a program. I knew this. 
I knew this already, right? This is crazy. So I understand the concept. I have my studio. So I can teach the thing. You know how much money I made from podcasting myself? <laughs> Zero dollars. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you know, you know why you're talking. Zero dollars. Why bro. you're talking, I'm not sure of the camera if you're paying attention to my reaction is before you got here, narrative said, Yo, bro, I noticed I haven't seen that motivational quote in the morning. Mm. Am I making this up? Verbatim just said to me, Yo, I noticed, bro, you haven't been mm -hmm. posting. So for me, mm -hmm. Your story, bro, I was supposed to meet you, bro. Like God makes no mistakes, bro. Uh -huh. That's a fact. The way it lines up. Let me just circle back real quick and tell you that if, when I was, I was in a marketing company myself, mm -hmm. one of the lead trainers, all right, let me be modest here. There's a lot of trainers in that company. I was a sought out trainer though. For a person on the come up, I was highly requested, mm -hmm. highly requested. And I was able to teach some of my friends how to get their message. Because you got to, the way you get picked is, is to say it's 400 people in the room that want to be a trainer. Mm -hmm. They divide you in circles, right? They're like 10 circles. You got to be the number one in that circle, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Then after you're the number one in that circle, let's say it's 11 people that get picked or 12 people out of those circles, you all 12 get in front of the room. And then you do it in front of everybody. And then you got to be three out of those 12 that get picked to be on the circuit. Mm -hmm. I was on the circuit. Nice. Et cetera, all right? Mm -hmm. Bro, but what I would show as part of my presentation is what I was before mm -hmm. I became a person in network marketing. Right. I used to put up quotes on my Blackberry Bold, bro, mm -hmm. on Facebook mm -hmm. at three in the morning, and it was just quotes. Mm -hmm. So me doing this exercise again, that opened the world for me to see network marketing. Right, 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 right. Constantly looking, and that was, that's a new, because I hate, I had a love-hate relationship. Social media, I got a love-hate relationship with y'all. I do. Because Carl said it right there. The noise gets more attention than the message. Like the the it's so bombarded with mess at times mm -hmm. and you could get mm -hmm. caught up in the algorithm. But for me, it's helped me because I gotta first go look for something inspiring, uh, inspiring or motivating mm -hmm. to go post it on social media. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to start my day. To hear that your book is motivational quotes is nuts, yeah. bro. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nuts. And then to, that you went global. And, and the piece that really got me here that I, I'm I'm so grateful that you're sharing, it's, bro, it's, this is what I heard, bro. You didn't let, in the midst of the noise, you didn't let, God's, God's story was for you regardless of what the devil tried to take from you. Mm -hmm. You got to the man who owns a publishing company at church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's not the guy. Mm-hmm. That was supposed to be the guy, but he was the door to the next guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I could the sign was still the sign. It didn't have right, to be right, the person. Right, the sign right, was right, still right, the sign. Right, right. And the stick to it is crazy, mm -hmm, bro. Mm -hmm. To not, I'm gonna tell you, Carl. I'm gonna tell you what you're doing for me. I'm a speaker, bro. Mm. I'm a speaker, bro. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. if there's a title I could own, I've taught when I was in network marketing. I'm a, all right. Let me let me look at the camera nah, and talk, own this real talk, quick. Talk to him. There was no group better it than my group of presentations, not mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Don't care how much money you make, God bless all that. The line of my crew had the best, the best presentations. Mm -hmm. The best presenters were from my group, hands down, bare to none. Mm -hmm. Don't care what mm -hmm. y'all said. Mm -hmm. We grew the fastest, it was proven, it was documented. Even once they came before me, you got better because you saw me. Ooh. Let's talk uh. about it. Uh. Let's talk about uh. it. I'm a speaker. <laughs> I'm a speaker. I'm a speaker. <laughs> but I never own the motivational speaker hat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'll mm -hmm. put speaker because I don't know if I'm going to sit here and motivate you. Hopefully, I'll inspire you. But I look at the greats, the mm -hmm. Inkies, the, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? There's a bunch, there's a line of them, bro. Mm -hmm. That's Eric Thomas's, bro. Honestly, I come from a hat of Johnny Wimby. I've seen some people, oh, bro, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard him talk, bro, and I stop in my tracks and mm -hmm. I'm like, can I do what you just did? Mm -hmm, do I have mm -hmm. this story? Am I qualified? So wanting to go to schools mm -hmm. was my way of being like, I may not be able to talk to you. Like that, yeah. yeah. But I, yo, bro, it's like bro. God put a mirror right now. Wow. Like you're not understanding, wow. bro. Like what you're yes. This is another episode where I say, I hope you're watching, but it doesn't matter. Cause this is for me. <laughs> <laughs> this one is for me, mm -hmm. bro. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Oh man, here's nope. where you at. Okay. Here's what I this is the part that I want to know. In in the turn of getting that vendor's license, mm -hmm. you started just speaking to the kids, right? I was already speaking. You were already speaking. Right. You got paid 25. Mm -hmm. How long did it take for you to create I was after the pandemic? They said that. You came back from the pandemic and then said, I want to teach podcasting and well. So let me tell you about about biggest plug on the planet for me. Well, before before I forget, because I, I will forget. Um, real quick, network marketing mm -hmm. taught me how to present, right? Mm -hmm. I realized I was I was I was comfortable in front of a crowd before, mm -hmm. but network marketing taught me how to present, right? Sure. So when I started speaking in schools, I took the freaking slides. Right, from the marketing <laughs> presentation. I made it my that's, own. Yeah, that's it. That's it, bro. Yeah, and I taught from me. the slides. So, I, so if I didn't do network marketing, I couldn't do what I'm doing now. You know, Carl, all right, you're giving me the alley for this, bro. You're giving me the alley for this, bro. There's so many pros in network marketing, bro. They're so Carl kept at a hundred here, bro. Before we got started, he made no money in network marketing, zero dollars. I made money. <laughs> <laughs> I made money in network marketing. He's at where he's at today because of network marketing. Mm -hmm. I have a podcast today and relationships. The people you know is who I know is because mm -hmm. of network marketing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sometimes. Companies go bad because I heard this in network marketing. Companies rise and fall on leadership, mm -hmm. but you can't take my experience. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Presentations, all that network marketing. This right here is a prime example of what you're supposed to learn you could apply in other places in the facts, world. You know facts, what I mean? Facts. There's some bad companies out there. Stay away. Mm -hmm. Run from them. Mm -hmm. But if you find a good one, plug in. Facts. So because I said the name, they're not a bad company. It's just, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's just that... I, I, yo, bro. I get you. I'm, yo, bro. So, so that twenty five hundred. Yep. I, I didn't make more than three thousand for the year. One year. Listen to that. Right, so check this out. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't. One year. One year, bro. One year. I'm looking at my statement. It said like three thousand one hundred bucks for the year. For the year, bro. Damn. Like, I had some months I made fifteen hundred or whatever, but then it all came back because right. people dropping or right. whatever. So for the year, I made three thousand dollars. Right, it's crazy. Yo, when I started speaking, bro, one speech for forty minutes. I remember they paid me three thousand dollars. Three thousand, and I was like, "Yo, I gotta get in the door." <laughs> I said, crazy. "I said, yo, I made more in forty minutes than what I did in a year, a year. in network marketing." Golly, so. <laughs> Great company, learned the most, mm -hmm. met the most incredible people, and became who I am today because of it, right? Okay. But I ain't made no bread. So use the slides. Use the slides. Create your own slides. For sure. Deliver your message. Mm -hmm. that, that was, that's, that's how I started, right? Um, your question was, what was the original question? Um, it was about publishing or speak? Oh, oh, okay. So let me tell you about the biggest plug. There we go. There you go. Um, Jamal Bowman, my guy. Um, he's now a congressman in New York. So he's no longer a principal. Mm -hmm. But he was my plug. He gave me my vendor's license, changed my life. Right, right. I followed up with him a few months later because we were we were doing a youth empowerment show at his um at his school. He's like, yo, how's how's speaking in schools going? I said it's all right. You know what I mean? Like I'm getting some gigs here and there, like some people are booking me. This dude was like, What's your email? I'm like, oh, it's my email right here. Boom, 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 boom. He's like, there you go. I'm like, what did he drop from my email? I checked my email. <sighs> this dude gave me a list of every single principal in New York City. That is crazy, bro. The name, the school, the phone number, the email. Ever since I had that list, I've made no less than a hundred thousand dollars a year, bro. That is fire, dog. No less than a hundred thousand. He gave you the black book, bro. Every single principle. How long said. were you speaking before he gave you this book? <clears throat> um. Oh, well, 
I would say too long, <laughs> but 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 I needed those steps, and, and I love you, bro. This is the only reason I'm I asking these that. questions, I bro. That. The only reason I ask these questions because one, this is for me, right? Because I I'm gonna tell you what happened. I went and spoke to a school in the Bronx, bro, and this is when I knew I done done. Shout out to Gary. Got me in Jamaica with a mm-hmm. room of thousands of people. I done been in. I done spoken some stages, bro. Mm-hmm. Events on Saturdays used to be a thousand, two thousand. Mm-hmm. Around the world, some places, bro, three thousand, four thousand. Those were amazing because I was speaking on my experience mm-hmm. in the business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did I get my results? I was being myself. This is mm-hmm. how you do it. Yes. Then I was being told, go speak at a school. Mm-hmm. Go speak at a school. Girl, I was talking to her at the time, like, when are you going to start speaking again? I'm like, I don't, what am I telling these kids? Mm-hmm. I'm not making the money I used to make before. I'm not in that position. What am I going to talk to these kids about? Just go there and speak. And I'm like, okay. I went and shout out to my boy Rafi, bro. Comes with his camera. He said, yeah, you know what you're gonna talk about? I said, I have no idea. What am I gonna talk about? Carl, the day I'm there, I'm in front, I'm gonna have no idea. But I'm gonna talk. Mm-hmm. And I post a clip on, I, I'm, that's one of my clips that are on Instagram mm-hmm. that did well. I see a whole bunch of responses, freestyle the thing, because you know the experience. Mm-hmm. Freestyle the, and when I was speaking, a kid raised his hand. When I was coming to mind, he was raising his hand. I was like, you got a question for me, son? I said, you got a question for me, young man? He goes, yeah, can I have your autograph? Mm-hmm. And that, I said, excuse me? Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. And other kids said, me too, me too. And I was signing autograph. Mm-hmm. I said, I could do this mm-hmm. for free. Mm-hmm. And then you learn. Just like, mm-hmm. oh, they're paying people to do this. Mm-hmm. So too long. I get what you mean by too long. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the work was done prior to mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Everybody's here with this pretty get rich quick and mm-hmm. buy this course to make this kind of Oh bro, I was broke. I was broke. I was and... I was I was trying to figure out how to get gas to get to the Bronx. I was trying to figure it out. I went there with two books in my hand, hoping somebody would buy it. The teacher that invited me bought two books for me. I had forty dollars to get back home. That's crazy. Bro, I was I was I was there. Negative bank accounts, cars repossessed. Like I was there, bro. Yo, dude, where's my car? Where's my car? I know. I, I know. It. I right I, yo, there. Did, did, ah! did, did I get? Did I get towed? Hello, y- where's my car? We don't. You don't have the car. Where could it be? Gone, bro. You back two, three months on your payment, bro. What, what you think is? What you think is that? Bro, so <laughs> yo, Matt, yo, so much, yo, bro. Let me tell you so much stuff, bro. So much stuff, and life is you fire, can't you bro. can't be you can't be surface level with this kind of conversation. Like you mm. gotta be, you gotta keep it real, right? Mm. What's well, Geechee Gotti? When it's real, you can see it in their eyes, right? Mm-hmm. You, yo, bro, this is real stuff. Mm-hmm. And so many times we try to be surface level with our motivation. And uh, to your point, what do I talk to these kids about? Mm-hmm. Speak mm-hmm. as if you're speaking to your younger self. That's that's a great what do, nugget right what does, there. For what sure. does your thirteen know, year old self need to hear? I know what he would need to hear before son. you make all these mistakes. Facts. It's a big before fact. you ruin these relationships. Before you blow this bread, what does your younger self need to hear? Mm. Before you hang out with those dudes, that's going to get you in trouble. Mm-hmm. What do you need to tell yourself? So too many times we operating from here. That ain't what the kids need. Operate from here. Mm. Once you operate from here, it's a wrap. So we get so caught up in trying to think of the perfect thing to say. No, it just needs to be real. You ain't got to be perfect. You just got to be real. So it's like, yo, I needed to hear that it's it's cool to be smart. Mm. I had kids convincing me that my intelligence was 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 nerdy. Nerdy. I was a nerd. They call me a nerd. Nerds is I up. I didn't want to be like Urkel. Back right, there, right, right, right. No. So you think, right? So, so I'm not. I want to. I want to be like the kids from my neighborhood. So I'm gonna not turn in my homework on purpose. I know the. I know the work. I knew the work. Mm. You wasn't turning it in because you was trying to be cool. Mm-hmm. You was trying to be hard. You was trying to be down. So I would tell yo, embrace your uniqueness. God made you this way for a reason. It's cool to be smart. You don't got to hang out with those dudes. And it's not cool to do those girls wrong. Talk about it. Yo. It's a fact. I wasn't, I was, I was the pimple-faced kid with the with the 
my teeth was growing in funny. Like I, I just, I just, I was so insecure. But I watched all my men disrespect women and they get every girl that they wanted. So I said, oh, that's what I need to do. I, I created this persona called Carl Mack. I just became somebody else. Crazy. And I started playing girls after I hurt so many women. I'm sorry. But it's like, I wish I could tell myself, don't go that route. Mm. That ain't you. You know what I mean? Like, mm. like, like, one mistake can lead you on the path of destruction. One decision can lead you on the path. Of, so, so just speak from here. That's all you need to do. And and that's what I would tell my younger speaker self. Don't overthink it, bro. Mm. Just share your testimony. Mm. And when and you touched on it, and I kind of want to get. I know we kind of breezed by it. You didn't necessarily breeze by it. You mentioned it. Because I didn't, the last the last thing I would think that you had some type of challenge with alcohol. That's what you were saying. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. At what age did this start? Was this so, something? <clears throat> so so the reason that that happened was because um, before I would drink to get tipsy and have a little fun, right? Mm-hmm. But when my, my parents were going through a rough, really rough patch in their marriage, I started drinking because I, I didn't like my reality. And I used to think depression was when somebody's on the verge of suicide, ready to kill themselves. I'm like, I ain't depressed. Mm. I ain't, I ain't me. No, d- depression is when you're trying to drown out your reality with some type of vice. You're trying to escape reality. Some people choose sex. Some people choose drugs. Some people choose alcohol. Some people choose gambling. Some people choose violence, either to somebody else or themselves. Some people choose all of the above. Facts. Like whatever you're addicted to to drown out your reality, that's the you and you're depressed, bro. And I didn't realize that, so I started for the first time blacking out, mm-hmm. getting blacked out, drunk. Trying to get behind the wheel, but realized I was too drunk and tired. I pulled over. I could, anything could happen to me. I just I just fell asleep in my car. So many times I fell asleep in my car. And um, it was just so bad, bro. And um, the there I went to a big event. Couldn't concentrate at the big event because I was hung, so hungover. I went to the bathroom to throw up. The only thing I could think about is taking a year off. Taking a year off. So... I took a year off and I, I told God, I ain't shared this part of the story, but I told God like, yo, this is going to be the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I need you to remove my desire to drink. In that instant, he took it away. For that whole year, I could go to the bar. I could buy people um, drinks, like, that. whatever. Give I, me could, water. I could go to the liquor store and, hey, let me get a, uh, a ginger ale. Like whatever. Like I was good. No desire whatsoever. Um, cause I feared the consequence. I feared what would happen if I broke that promise. So I didn't do it, mm. but I told God like, yo, I want to be executive director again. I was only executive director for like a couple months, mm. but I want, I wanted that title again. And, um, 11 months, 11 months in, I'm like, I don't know if you ever had them frustrated prayers. But I said, what? I said, have I? I said, God, <laughs> I ain't trying to doubt you right now. Right. But it's month 11, mm-hmm. and it don't look like I'm hitting executive director. Mm. Mm. I did my part. Do your part. You got to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling God, yo, you need to figure this out. I did my part. So I'm not doubting you, but it don't look like it. So you got to figure this out. He ignored me. Mm. I ain't get no sign. I ain't get no message. I ain't get no confirmation. I ain't get nothing. I'm trying my hardest to get executive director. It's not happening. Two weeks later, nothing. God was testing me to see if I would go back on what I told him I would do. I made a promise. He knows what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing. He made a prom. Uh, I made a promise to him, and he was testing me to see if I would go back on my promise because it didn't look like what I thought it would look like by month eleven. So I did not drink during that time frame, 
And because I did not drink, he rewarded me with the idea of my book. So I wasn't executive director of my network marketing company. He made me young executive of my own brand. Hard, bro. <laughs> so where mm. I'm thinking, yo, make me executive director. He, mm. He's like, that's it? That's it? I got bigger and I got better for you. I said, but you say you ain't doing what you say you're going to do. Nah, I got bigger and I got better for you. I always wanted to run my own company. I didn't know what it would look like. I didn't know what I would be doing. I'm talking to kids for a living, bro. And it's the best thing. I, I love it so much I would do it for free. So why not do that for a living? I would do this for free. We, we just talked about right. I would do this for free. I have done it for free. I still sometimes do it for free. But I'm doing this for a living now, right? So I was, I was struggling with alcohol. God removed my desire to drink. Get, rewarded me with the idea for my book. My life totally changed. You know, now I'm not, you know, when I go out, I drink or whatever the case may be, but I'm not coming from a place of sadness. I'm not coming from a place of de- depression. I'm coming from a place of celebration. Mm-hmm. All right, but but now currently I'm um, I'm not drinking or, or um, so my fast this year was no drinking, no sex for six months. So. Yo, bro, you kind of, you starting to, you starting to freak me out, son. Here's why. Here's why. When I got into my network marketing company, all right, back when I got started, the story, the parallels are crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm not having sex till I hit to this level. Mm. I want zero distraction. Why, why would you say that? Why would you, why would that be your, your proclamation? So it wasn't, okay, let me be honest here. It wasn't that that was something that I needed. I just got, a, I was fresh out of a breakup mm-hmm. and now I joined a place where there's a bunch of women. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, first of all, I got to be fine with me. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm out here trying to mess up anything that I got going Whatever's going on in here, I'm, I'm new to this space. Mm-hmm. I don't know who's with who. Mm-hmm. And I'm not here for no women. Mm-hmm. I'm here for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. I want to make money. I want to travel, et cetera. Once you start getting some recognition. They come heavy. Heavy. You no longer have to, hey, mm-hmm. I'm Rob. It's, mm-hmm. oh, that's Rob. And I never, I never really been in a space where I've always been somewhat popular, but it wasn't driven like that. You're a celebrity now. It's different. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I say, you know what? Now nah, I'm locking in. Mm-hmm. I'm locking in, uh, and it was the reward was insane. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like it was insane. But to hear you say that, right? Like yeah, yeah, to be yeah, at yeah. that space now. So why, why is that something for you now? So I, um, so many reasons. I feel like God been like nudging me, like. You need to stop. Mm. You, you need to chill out. But you know me. <laughs> I'm gonna chill. I, I'm gonna chill out, but not yet. Let me let me just, let me just I, have. I the, enjoy this, right, guys. Right, let me right. let me just have this. Right. But um, I realize that um, I still need to do this too. All right. So I still need to read the story of Solomon, King Solomon, and I still need to read the story of uh, Samson in the Bible. Right. I haven't done it yet, but I feel like there's a lot of parallels between me and those men. Right. But there's certain there's certain people that God calls for specific missions. They can either accept it or they don't. There's consequences if you don't. There's sacrifices if you do. But the rewards are better than the sacrifice. Um, and I feel like because I've always been, I've always been like this charismatic cool dude, I attract a lot of women. And I indulge in that. But that that distracts me from business, right? Mm-hmm. Drinking also distracts me from business. Mm. So it's like, if I know this particular woman is not going to be my wife, you know, you, you've had situations where it's like, okay, you know what? This could be fun. But I don't see a future here. But the discipline, the higher, my highest self is supposed to be like, I can't entertain this. Mm -hmm. But my manly self, I guess you could say, is like, oh nah, I wanna, I wanna go this route. I wanna have fun over here, and I'm gonna get back to this in a second. And I feel like 
a lot of times I'm going this way when this is the path that I'm supposed to be on. And it's like, oh, we got drinks and women over here? I bet. But it's here, and I'm supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I realized that when I'm sober and not having sex, I see things a lot clearer. And it's crazy because some women that you would have a lot of fun with and you're sober and not having sex, they exit your life. And I'm like, dang, like, <laughs> but I realized you just showed me that you weren't for me anyway. Mm. Right. So, so um the right woman for you or me or whoever is designed to help you with your purpose. So if you're not fully operating in your purpose, more than likely you're going to pick the wrong person. Because the woman that's designed specifically for you is going to help you along your path in your journey as you are going to help her. You help mate. That's your help mate. So if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, anybody that comes along, it's going to be a distraction. So I need to be fully operating in my purpose in order to attract the right help mate. So if I ain't on my job, what can I expect? Yeah, women are great encouragers and they want to help you do your thing, but yo, you're not walking in your purpose, bro. You shouldn't even be dating. You shouldn't even be dating. Yo, Carl. The young executive, bro, from a, listen, I'm, I'm going to give y'all a message behind how this came about, okay? Oh, we even talk about that. That's what I was saying. Like, <laughs> like that's, we got to get there because I want y'all, this is a moment for me. If you're watching this, I thank you so much. You know, I'm probably going to have a video at the beginning to tell you to like, comment, subscribe, share this stuff, you know, stuff that everyone on these platforms says, but hear me out. What this is doing for me. If it's, if it's really doing something for you, if you got something in the first five and you went out your way and paused it and share it, your, share it with your friend or maybe you had a conversation, like me and Wally, me and Aaron just talked about the quotes, bro, and you spoke about it. Everything right now is crazy for me. But hear me. We were at Invest Fest. We were at Invest Fest. And it was a day to a register. And I had mm -hmm. an option that day. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was me. Shout out to Bev. Shout out to Dior. Looked at outfits. I said, what do I want to wear? Do I want to wear this? Or I want to wear this? I said, you know what? I'm going to rock my man Milk's joint. I'm going to rock my man Milk because I'm at an event and might as well rock my man's brand. Mm -hmm. And that day is where I walk by Carl mm -hmm. and he's like, are Yo, you from New York? You know, you know Kirk? I'm like, yeah, this is my man. And I was interviewed. If you looked at my page, I'm going to resurface that, that, I bet. that content for sure. Um... I was interviewed by, by the young executive, right? And here's what I will say. Your experience doesn't lie to you. Energy doesn't lie to you. Mm. I was telling this to Carl, and it's no offense to anybody because I respect everybody's grind, hustle, purpose, anyone trying to find their way, right, to better their craft. There's people that will go to events, pop up, and you see it on Instagram a lot too where people are there. I love those who have questions that are going to get something out of people mm -hmm. opposed to... So what's your body count? Those, <laughs> yeah, yeah, those. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, so it kind of when I kind of see this, mm -hmm. I don't know where it's gonna go, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm at I'm I'm at the biggest event mm -hmm. that you must be at. Shout out to Earn Your Leisure, huge event, and boom! I see the gentleman set up with his whole. He got a camera set up. Oh, this is fire! Cool. Let's do a video. Let's do. A, I'm gonna interview you. Oh, bet interviewed me and Chris, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and instantly I was like. This ain't the average person, though. Mm. though. Thank you, bro. He's not average. The way he interviewed me, what he said, how he got the, how you got it to me, took my email down, the whole package, bro. Mm -hmm. The questioning, how you did it, how you got it to me, was like, who is this dude? And then once I knew that you knew Milk, I was like, I met him for a reason. Mm -hmm. To circle back now, bro, mm -hmm. and have this conversation. Mm -hmm. Beyond grateful, bro. And and I, I shared this with you real briefly. I shared it to everybody. Yo, I was I was out of my comfort zone. 
I was out of my element, you know. I I I like stretching myself, but then again, it's like it's uncomfortable, right? So I'm at Invest Fest. <clears throat> I just get there. I just finished registering. I knew I was gonna bring my camera because you just never know who you're gonna meet. But I was like, I don't know who to talk to. I'm like, there's mad people walking by. I recognize that person from Instagram. I don't say nothing. I'm mm-hmm, on mute. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm just like, you know, because I'm not, I, I've, I've done a bunch of podcasts. I've done a bunch of interviews. I've done a bunch of hosting, but I don't normally go to events to do that. So I was like, okay, when I go to like celebrity basketball games, I bring little kids with me, let them do the interviews, let them shine. Or I bring a, a pretty woman, an attractive woman, and let her do the interview, right? I'm usually behind the scenes. So I'm like, man, I don't. I don't really know who to talk to. I don't really know what to say to anybody. And then you walk by with my man's brand on. I was like, yo, bro, you don't say nothing now. <laughs> How crazy is you this, bro? You don't say bro? nothing now. Like, this is the easiest person you could talk to. Right. It's not like, you know, soon it will be as big as Nike. Right. But it's like making it look cool. It's a very specific brand. For sure. You know, Carl, you know him. <laughs> right. That's your man. <laughs> right, right. So when I saw you, I had, I'm like, I had to stop you. Right. And again, like you said, everything happens for reasons. All oh, God, if that never happened, if you never wore that shirt, right, I would have never spoke to you. It's a fact, bro. I would have never <laughs> spoke to you, bro. Because <laughs> it was mad people it registering, mad people bro. registering. Yo, I think I think this is a prime example, man. Uh, you know, and, and this show here, you're going to get something you're going to learn. You're going to learn something. You're going to laugh about something. You're going to hear about something. I think, bro, I think this is one of the most well-rounded episodes I've personally encountered. Thank you, bro. In a very long time, bro, because of how we met, what you're saying, who you know. We know the same people, Mm -hmm. and I I didn't. Bro. Yeah, this is incredible, bro. And and let people know where they can find you. Plug it out. Definitely have it in the descriptions, but- Give me your plug and stuff like Listen, that. Listen, everything incredible. is at Young Executive, Y-O-U-N-G-E-X-E-K-U-T-I-V-E. You'll find everything that you need to find there. If you're looking to write a book, contact me there, all right? Because I help people publish their book, share their story. Don't be afraid to share your story. It will inspire others. So Young Executive, um, you'll find everything there. If you're looking to public speak, I can help you with that. If you're looking to get your program into schools, I can help you with that. All right. They need everything, whether it's art, whether it's technology, whether it's you as a as a mentor, a coach, a counselor. We need more examples of success in our schools. Growing up, we thought success was sex, drugs, money, violence. We thought success was sports, drugs, entertainment. Like that's not what success is, even though the music, the culture sometimes pushes that. They need your story, your example. How did you make it from where you were to where you are today? I would love to help you get your story out there. Let's get it. That's a fucking episode. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, boy. Bro. Yo. Much love to you, King. Oh, man.